Hey there. Um, so I want to show you what I'm glad is happening because a lot of these people are wolves in sheep's clothing. They spent like Dave, this guy's brother, David. Now he spent a lot of time on my channel for the last couple years pretending to be amicable. Uh, and yet I would hear from people saying, I don't know why he's on your wall because when he's, and he pretends to agree with you, but on other walls, he is really abusive to people. Um, and I saw one time there was a brother getting clear on the truth of sanctification by faith, great, uh, that Christ is our sanctification. And this guy, brother Dave was on there tearing him a new one about how he just wanted to get out of doing works. And I actually kind of uh, stepped in and kind of mediated that exchange. And it was like, you, you know, calm down. And uh, that was, I was still kind of new. And I knew he was affiliated with Ro Renee Roland. So I figured he was grace and there was mis misunderstanding. And I was just freshly teaching uh, Christ is our sanctification. And he toned down his language on my wall for the longest time. Um, but I kept hearing things that, no, this, he is works, you know. Uh, well, I, I did that Pastor So-and-So video kind of making a, a joke about the attitude these people have about rewards. Um, and the reason I do this stuff is because they get offended. They pre Well, they think they're actually walking in the Spirit, and they think they're really nice. <laughs> uh, now, Brother Dave is an evangelist. He goes out and preaches the gospel, and he thinks he's really accumulating a lot of rewards. Uh, and he, he thinks he is the model of how we're supposed to be. And, of course, he's going to win a lot of rewards, and he feels like he needs to tell everybody how obedient they need to be. Uh, recently... Someone shared me some posts where he was arguing with somebody on a Facebook wall saying, and I mean, it's a couple years old, but he was saying, you know, no, you can't just believe with your mind. You have to believe with your heart. And it's like everywhere he goes, he's trying to put people in bondage and he's not talking about their liberty in Christ to stand on the ground of justification. He feels the need to go find believers and berate them about their spiritual condition. And he thinks he's going to get rewards for this. So I just... Uh, wait, you know, and yeah, I poke a little bit because eventually they've had it and they'll reveal what they really believe. Now look at what he says. Okay, this is, he says, many say, who cares if they get a reward at the judgment seat of Christ? And he says, God cares. <laughs> and on that very day, on that day, every Christian will care. Having looked at the losses that careless Christians will suffer at the judgment seat of Christ, our hearts ought to be stirred to press on for better things. We ought to fear the shame of regret, the rebuke and retribution, retribution waiting apathetic Christians that we do not allow ourselves to become slack. I challenge you to uh, ask the Lord to specifically identify the changes that you need to make in order to avoid the shame, rebuke, regret, and retribution. Then, with the Lord's help, make those changes. To deny the judgment seat of Christ is insanity. To claim all believers receive the same reward is even more insane. Scripture is very clear about our life and service matters unto God, and to make fun of it is quite bold. Well, actually, you're quite bold. Uh, I don't want to see him on my wall ever again. So I blocked it. Uh, but this is the person that Paul warned. If you build with wood, hay, and stubble, you will suffer loss. Now, you'll be saved, but you are damaging God's building. And if you're not a believer, God will destroy you. Um, now, I don't know if he's a believer or not. I think he is. But for years, he has been arguing against the grace of God. Arguing with, with people who believe the grace and, and, and undermining their doctrine uh, on everything about sanctification and rewards. And this is the tone he takes. Now he's never taken that tone on my channel before. He hasn't dared, but something's emboldened him. Uh, he's, he knows what I teach. He's been around my teachings for years because I don't teach that every re person's reward is the same. I teach Christ is our reward, but there's a weight of glory. And how much Christ you gain 
and also how much Christ flows through you and is deposited into the other saints for the building uh, becomes a memorial and a prize. But it's still Christ's work. We're nothing. God gives the increase, and yet each of us has a reward for our work. But our work is a stewardship of the grace of God, and it is an enjoyment. It is not what he's talking about. And there is no suffering of retribution at the judgment seat of Christ. That is a wicked Antichrist teaching. Uh, that is a denial um, of, of what the scripture tells us about the Bema Seat. Pontius Pilate was the first part of the Bema Seat, and Jesus suffered there. He was wounded for our, he was chastised, the uh, chastisement of our peace was upon him there. He took the sufferings. Uh, he suffered for us and was beaten for us, for our failures. And uh, when he comes, it will be without sin unto salvation to those who look for him. And he will burn off all the wood, hay, and stubble. And there will be some that suffer loss because they burnt only, or they built with only wood, hay, and stubble. But that which is remaining after the fire burns off the dross will be rewarded. Okay? Uh, but if all you did is go around and tear people down and make them fear God and motivate them like dogs with the carrot and stick and put them under the wage system, uh, and you know, Dave is a law teacher for sanctification. He basically says, well, the law says you have to stop sinning. And so therefore you need to try. And that's all he's got to say. The thing is, is. You know, these people who speak about retribution when they talk about God and they've got this anger um, and they're trying to hold that anger back with the flesh or the law. Uh, and the law is the strength of sin. You have to be careful because they'll boil over. Um, and I don't know if this guy has a temper problem or what, you know, but these zealots, the really zealous types, you do have to be careful. So I had to kind of hold back some of my words. There are some th choice things I'd love to say. Uh, I do believe this is a believer, but I know people that have known him for years, and this has been the way with him. He's not making any progress when it comes to the truth beyond the basics of what they teach justification is, which is just, that means you're going to heaven. It's a free gift. You're going to heaven. It's a watered-down uh version of justification that has nothing to do with your Christian life. Your Christian life is justification by works. From James, they actually take a different view of the definition of justification that overthrows Paul's doctrine of justification. And it is Galatian error. Uh, and recently, Brother Dave did a post that I saw saying that, you know, whatever supposed Galatian era is, as if he had no idea what that term meant. And again, this is a guy who's been listening to my teaching for three years. So he's not being honest with himself and with the word and what he's heard. And, you know, it's a thing where you are accountable to the word of God. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Greg shared that uh, video by Good Hope recently, um, just the other day, about how people will not receive instruction from the Word. They are not teachable. If they didn't already know it, they're not going to learn it from you. Uh, even though it's this clear scriptural teaching, I do teach. I teach more thoroughly on the Bema Seat than any of these guys do. I've got a whole playlist on the Bema Seat Judgment. For you to say that I teach that everybody just gets the same reward. No, Christ is our reward. But you don't know what that means. Uh, you don't know what the building is. You don't know what I mean when I teach that Christ is our life and Christ is our sanctification, even though you've heard hours and hours of my teaching about it. Why? What's wrong with you? Something's not getting through. Uh, you are puffed up. In, in your works righteousness. And it is works righteousness you're standing in. But uh, you do need a public rebuke. You know, you, uh, 
are the perfect example of what we're talking about. Most of the people, many of the people that benefit from my uh, teaching have, again, been at this a lot longer than you have. Uh, they're not babes in Christ that just got saved five years ago and they're still zealously going out and doing everything. They're people who've been around for 30 and 40 years in the Lord. Uh, and they know Paul's doctrine. And so they recognize what I'm talking about in their experience and in the word. Those are the ones who are really laying hold of it. Uh, number one. And number two, many of them have been brought into situations where they are bedridden. They're in wheelchairs. They have multiple chronic conditions. And I would love to see someone like you come and tell them about the retribution they're going to receive because they're not busy working for the Lord. You don't know the Lord at all. You don't know his heart at all. Uh, you are hard-hearted. And that's the nicest thing I can say about you. Unfortunately, that's the nicest thing I can say about you is that you're hard-hearted. This is what it looks like to be hard-hearted, and you're the one who needs to repent. You came here saying, I need to repent and fear retribution. I'm not telling you you need to re fear retribution, but you are go there's going to be a big bonfire, okay, <laughs> at the judgment seat. All of us are probably going to have some things in it. You're probably going to have a lot more things in that bonfire than you think. Now, I do teach that that bonfire happens in an instant, and it'll be a, it'll be a, behind us when we stand at the Lord. We're all going to be rejoicing together, and you're going to be glad that all that stuff was burned up. But right now, it is embarrassing to watch. Number one, and number two, it's hurtful. You're hurting people. You're damaging people. You're hindering people. Uh, and like I said. I would, love, I would love for some of the people on my wall who suffer physically uh, to pipe up in the comments here and talk about how your heart has become a garden to the Lord and how you have entered into a fellowship with him that is sweet and the kind of fruit the Lord is finding there. That he is not, he's found a lily among the thorns that he's not finding uh, among the donkeys in Ishmael's, you know, camp. <laughs> uh, and that's what this is. This is the donkeys. This is the wild ass of a man kind of person. Uh, the children of the flesh persecuting the children of the promise. That's exactly what this is. Brother Dave, you need to read Galatians. You're getting a cow. What makes me sick is that you're getting a Bible degree. You're actually getting a degree in the Bible. And you don't even recognize Galatian error. What are you studying? Really? Um, I'm trying to tone it down. I, I'm pretty angry. But I don't know if you're the kind of person that can just absolutely blow your top and go on a rage across the country. You know, if you get offended enough. So I'm going to let it be. I'm going to pray for you that you get light. Uh, because I do believe you're a believer, but you are not building. You are tearing down. Um, this is not the spirit. You are not walking in the spirit. You're not building, uh, in the fellowship. You are not running the race according to the rules. Uh, you are vain jangling. <laughs> okay, take care.